A lot of people think that the mental side of rolling is the hardest part. And they're right and they're wrong. If you've got a very easy step-by-step -step process for practicing for the right mental frame of mind, the mental side of rolling is actually quite easy. Here's where people break down when it comes to their roll. Number one, when they tip over, they're not prepared for the sensations that they're going to experience. Those sensations include tipping on an eddy line and feeling water swirl around them. Tipping over and having your paddle hit a rock underwater, or even their body hit a rock underwater. Those are two things. A third thing that people aren't familiar with is tipping over and having it take them longer than they're used to to set the paddle up. Those three sensations are sensations that cause people to lose focus on the task at hand. Now what is the task at hand? The task at hand is simply getting the paddle set up, head down and hips. So what our objective is with the mental side of rolling is simply to make sure that we're trained in such a way that we're able to keep our focus on task at hand at all times. In fact, a good question for you to ask right now is, who rolls consistently? People who roll consistently, number one, can focus on the task at hand, number two, have the technique for rolling, and number three, are prepared to roll. So on focusing for the task at hand, you need to be able to train to do that. Here's a couple easy training exercises, starting off in a swimming pool. When you tip over upside down, you're always doing phase four. You're always tipping over, not set up. You're tipping over with one hand on the paddle. You're trying a whole variety of different ways to go from not set up to set up. That's number one. Now, one of the main reasons to do that is it gives you more time underwater and gets you more comfortable being underwater for a longer period of time. Bottom line is, if you tip over and roll up in three seconds or less every time, the first time you tip over in the river and you find yourself upside down for more than three seconds, you're going to be panicking. You're probably going to lift your head and you're probably going to miss a roll. So it's very key to practice being underwater longer than most of the times you'll be underwater in the river. My recommendation is get comfortable up to 10 seconds. If you can go longer than that, great. The second thing is increasing the sensations. One of the sensations is your boat bouncing around. Well, if you're in a pool, have a friend bounce you around. Dane happens to have a friend or a dad that bounces him all over the place. Being 58 pounds, I can throw him around. So he's experienced with all kinds of crazy situations. He's comfortable with it. So when you go over in the, in the river and you're in a wave train and the waves bouncing you around, it won't bother you. The next thing is swirly water. It's really hard to find swirly water in a pool, so my recommendation is to go out to the river the next time you're out there, tip over on a nice, easy eddy line. You're going to feel the water swirling around your body. Do it again and again and again, then go to a harder eddy line. Ultimately, you don't want to find an eddy line in a river that you tip over in that's any swirlier than the one you've already practiced in. That way, you're not going to lose the focus on the task at hand. You're going to tip over, you're going to feel the water. Hey, this is cool, I'm not worried about it. Another sensation that you're going to encounter in a river is you're going to tip over and your paddle's going to hit a rock. I don't know how many times I've heard people say, my paddle hit a rock, so I swam. Now, of course, in their mind, they're thinking, whoa, it's shallow, my paddle hit a rock, maybe I'm in a bad situation, I should get out of the boat. Of course, they get out of the boat, and then their butt hits the rock, and their knees hit the rock, and their boat hits the rock, and then they have a hard time swimming to shore. Not good. When your paddle hits a rock, it already hit the rock. So what do you do? Focus on the task at hand. Set up and roll. You can actually practice for this. Simply find a nice shallow eddy, tip over where your paddle's bouncing on the bottom, maybe even your body's on the bottom. Don't forget to tuck down so you don't hit your face. Practice rolling up. All right, our last one, being prepared to roll. The next time you get to a rapid, you need to remind yourself, you might not be right side up the whole way. It's entirely possible that you're going to tip over in the middle of the rapid. So before you enter that rapid, think to yourself, okay, if I were to tip, what am I going to do? I'm going to set up quick, head down on hips, and be on my way. Just that quick mental reminder is enough that you'll know what to do when you do tip over. Because remember, it's not if you tip over, it's when you tip over. People per perform much better if they know that there's a likelihood of tipping over. Last but not least, you need to enjoy tipping over and rolling. Rolling in a whitewater kayak is not something that you need to be afraid of. It's something that's exciting, exhilarating. It's one of the best parts about kayaking. The fact that you can tip over, roll up, and your boat doesn't fill up, and you can keep going, it's unbelievable. It's awesome. My recommendation is you don't get off the river without doing 10, 15, 20, 50, however many rolls you, you can in a day. 
I know I probably roll an average of 50 times every time I go in the water. It's something that can be fun. It doesn't have to be scary. The longer it's been since you've done your last roll, the scarier your next roll is going to be. Remember that.